Merci, Monsieur le Président, de me donner la parole. Je tiens tout d'abord à souhaiter une chaleureuse bienvenue à tous les membres du gouvernement ici présents. Ma question orale s'adresse au ministre de l'Enseignement secondaire. Madame le ministre, l'an dernier, vous avez décidé, à la suite d'une visite de travail effectuée dans la capitale économique en date du 17 septembre 2021, du plafonnement des frais d'APE à 25 000 francs dans les établissements d'enseignement secondaire public de notre pays et du remboursement immédiat du trou perçu afin de faire taire les nombreuses controverses qui avaient pris corps en la matière dans l'opinion. Décision qui a d'ailleurs été accueillie diversement par les uns et les autres. Ainsi, ces laudateurs en ont vu une mesure sanitaire visant à alléger les souffrances des parents en ce moment où se vit le marasme provoqué par la guerre des eaux ukrainiens. Par contre, certaines âmes avertis quant à elles pensent que vous n'avez pas suffisamment questionné les réalités de nos institutions scolaires avant de vous prononcer. En ce sens que nos lycées et collèges sont certes variés et émergent dans des milieux différents, mais sont tous confrontés au manque crucial d'infrastructures à créer, à l'insuffisance des personnels et des ressources pour un fonctionnement adéquat. Pour contourner ces difficultés, il recourt très souvent à l'assistance de l'élite et pour l'essentiel à la contribution des parents à travers les APE. Fort de cela, ceux à effectifs pléthoriques entreprennent dans la plupart du temps des projets de construction ambitieux qui les obligent à lever les petites contributions afin de pouvoir leur structure en salle de classe. Ceci étant votre décision n'a pas manqué de livrer certains de ces chefs d'établissement dont les structures ont des bâtiments en chantier à la vendue populaire ou alors à les mettre en conflit avec les prestataires des types projets dans la mesure où ces derniers acceptent difficilement la révision des contrats que leur proposent les maîtres de l'œuvre que sont les APE. Dans la foulée, on ne peut pas aussi nier que certains esprits malins profitent de cette situation pour faire fortune de manière illicite. Ceci étant, ma préoccupation est alors celle de savoir les mesures d'urgence que vous avez prises en vue de finaliser ces multiples projets de construction restés en friche d'une part et de doter nos structures scolaires d'un minimum d'infrastructures d'accueil de l'autre. Sinon, n'est-il pas indiqué que l'État d'autre, par votre entre-gens et le soutien du Parlement, ces établissements, d'un fonds spécial à l'effet de leur permettre de boucler les travaux entrepris sans mettre en mal leur équilibre fonctionnel Je vous remercie pour vos éclairages, Madame le Ministre. Merci, Monsieur le Président.
is a voluntary association. If a school does not exist, PTA does not exist. PTA is not a lender. PTA is not supposed to lend money to a school. PTA helps the school and it's a partner to the school. If PTA comes to a school and goes to borrow money in order that the school should pay back this money to the PTA, then the PTA is wrong. Secondly, when PTA took their money, did they see the minister? Did they consult the minister? How many PTAs am I supposed to follow to know how much money they took and how much is supposed to be returned? Why should a school leave academics that it's supposed to follow to be following monies that PTAs have taken? Honorable members of Senate, there are responsibilities that go with PTA and that go to the minister. And I want to say here that monies, monies borrowed are not paid back, or that projects designed are not fulfilled. That is not the responsibility of the minister. And I want to say here that I did say that PTA should not take more than 25,000 francs per head. That is the student. We have parents who have children in schools who cannot pay money. We have farmers who, until they have sold their crops, cannot pay money. Then we are going to deal with some schools whose PTAs will go and collect money from the bank. Tell me, how are we solving the parents' problems? President Paul Bia has talked about inclusion, inclusion in the schools. Tell me how many parents are going to take money from the bank. I don't believe that senators as you are, that you would not take into account the situation of all parents. You will be taking into account the situation of the few who have money to go and borrow and get taxes at whatever they view. I think there's something not correct. And we have said that all PTAs should toe the line. And so last year, as the senator has truly outlined, I did say it, that the ceiling is 25. And if you have an ambitious project, which is a word that you've used here, an ambitious project, make it pluriannual. That is to say, you don't finish it in one year so that you're going to punish a, a, a poor parent to pay a certain <coughs> amount of money. We're well, doing a plural one. So this year we're going to do this. This year we're going to do this. And that year we're going to do this. And everybody, I suppose, the honorable the, uh, senator knows that when you take the loans, there are conditions. And that when the key aspects of that loan changes, the loan is supposed to be revised. Therefore, you should revise your loan. Don't ask the minister to revise the loan for you. Or don't ask the minister what, is the, what are the measures that I have taken to ensure that these projects are finished. No, I have not taken any measures and I don't intend to. So we have to be very careful. I think I have a lot of respect for senators because I think that, especially for this year, we have a set of senators who are very alert and they know what they are doing. 
Let's not cause principals to go into loans which they cannot pay. For today, let me tell you that most of the schools in Africa are going towards a situation where there are no fees paid in schools. And that I'm going to your second question, your second part of your question, which says that a special fund should be created to finance these projects. Which projects? With whom did you consult? Which are the projects? The projects are satisfying whom? No. Because if the head of state wants everybody to go to school, the head of state will not be saying that people should go and take loans in order to pay projects. I have told the schools that if you want money, you have to know how to organize and manage money and manage budgets. The budgets should be managed sensibly so that you know exactly that you can pay back a certain part of the budget without, without causing us problems. The PTA has caused us a lot of problems in the schools. Most of them are fighting with the principals because they have turned the money into uh, a business plan. The principals are taking the money and making business. And so they cannot pay enough attention to the academics that they're supposed to pay. No. Let us help schools run correctly. And as I said, I don't think that the head of state's inclusive policy can even allow us to go and take special funds. We cannot take special funds. I mean, a sex budget for this year. In fact, it has reduced the running budget, which used to be about 10 billion, has reduced to 9 billion. If the state had money, it would do more. Because I know that it wants everybody's child to, to go to school, and we all do. So, Senator, I thank you very much for your question. But I think that you too have not gone far enough in looking for what the situation is. We are close to saying no, no fees because we are paying 7,500 for, for going to school. 7,500. Where will that lead you? But that's how we are in our own environment. That's what we are capable of doing for this time. And so uh, my answer to the Honorable Senator says, uh, Finally, should we not suggest you to ask us as the Senate to ask for a school, I mean, a, what is a special fund for school infrastructure? I don't know about you, but I would say no. Ladies and gentlemen, sir, that's the answer. Uh, thank you very much.